Good afternoon. I'm going to start by asking a few questions. How many of the people in attendance today drive a car? How many, how many have a car that they drive? Almost vast majority of us. How many of us have driven a twin turbocharged engine? Few of them, wow, some enthusiasts. And you would recognize once you drive that and you go back to the base model, no matter what brand it is, you feel the difference. So today I'm gonna to talk about our twin turbo strategy as I would call it for Mara. Mara is the largest Bitcoin miner in the world today as a public company. We are not only the largest Bitcoin miner, we also hold the second largest Bitcoin as we know today. Okay. So with that, I will first bore you with things that you already know. Some of the things that you have been listening since the morning. As to why Bitcoin? As you can see in the last 15 years, 11 years out of those 15 years have been positive for Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been the largest or the best returning asset class amongst any other asset classes that we know. It's, it's data won't lie, right? I come from traditional background, traditional finance background, and I was one of those skeptics asking these questions, what is Bitcoin, why Bitcoin? But when you start learning about it, when you look at the data, data won't lie, whether it's gold, whether it's NASDAQ, whether it's S&P 500, whether it's small cap, micro cap, large cap, you name it, high yield bonds, bonds, doesn't matter. So a unique asset class, why is it unique? Primarily because it's portable, it's, uh, it's secure, uh, it's much more secure than any other thing out there. Uh, it's free from any intervention from several sovereigns. And that's the key distinction between fiat and Bitcoin. Now, again, I'm preaching to the choir. People in attendance today here have heard this many, many times, but bear with me for a few seconds. What we've seen is over a period of time, the adoption of Bitcoin. And initially it was the hobbyists and people who could see the long-term vision of Bitcoin, understanding where it's heading towards. Then came the retail that brought, brought the valuation up. And then we saw institutions coming in. And as we are seeing now, it's beyond institutions, it's the sovereigns. The sovereigns are coming in and taking positions on Bitcoin. And we expect this adoption to further to continue from here on. And as I had said as in, in the beginning, I am one of those traditional minds who were skeptic about it. And uh, people like Michael Saylor and Fred Thiel uh, uh, orange-pilled me <laughs> in terms of Bitcoin strategy on your balance sheet as treasury, finance managers and executives have to pay attention to this. You're missing out on a once in a lifetime opportunity that may not present itself again. Learn about it, listen to it, see, see, seek the knowledge yourself and you'll get there. Now, in terms of going back to Mara, where does Mara fit into this twin turbo strategy and, and Bitcoin? Uh, what is Salman talking about? We're the largest Bitcoin miner worldwide. We have 1.7 gigawatt capacity worldwide. Uh, that's, that's a lot of electrons that we consume to create something called Bitcoin. Our revenues are entirely exposed to Bitcoin today because we are proudly mining Bitcoin worldwide. So we operate in uh, four different continents. We have 16 data centers worldwide. And uh, we have large scale to small scale, all sorts of sites. We not only do that, but also we are very creative. We are looking at mining Bitcoin through stranded energy. No matter what happens to Bitcoin price in future or global hash rate, we want to be able to continue to mine irrespective of what the energy cost is going to be. So our goal is to be energy efficient, operating cost efficient and capital efficient. And that, that keeps the Bitcoin network alive. Does anybody know who was the first miner in the world? Any guess? Satoshi, thank you. Satoshi was the first miner. We continue his legacy by being the largest miner and keeping the Bitcoin network secure 
and alive and continuing to keep the value of Bitcoin as, as it is today and continue to grow from here. So Mara has the second largest uh, holding position in Bitcoin, as we call it, the HODL. It's 48,000 coins. As of today's price, that's more than $4.5 billion in fiat terms, if you, want, if you like the dollar terms. Uh, and it's continuing to grow. How did we get there? Uh, just, just, a, just a few um, years ago, just if you pick up three years ago, Mara was a very different company. We, our previous CEO and management team decided to raise capital and invest that capital into mining capacity or computers, as it's called, ASIC miners. And we deployed that as a company and rented hosted space and data centers. And we, st we started growing very, very quickly. As you can see, the trajectory over this period of time, we've deployed a lot of compute. Now, what happened is once we achieved that compute or the power, we, we realized that we could go beyond that. We are not going to stop here from a scale perspective. We want to squeeze more out of the system and, uh, and for our stockholders. What we did was we shifted or we pivoted towards more asset-owned and heavy uh, asset uh, strategy and, and, and a combination of asset light and asset heavy. So we started the year last year with just 0% owned and operated capacity. And we exited the year with uh, more than 70% on and operated capacity. And that's a, that's a huge pivot. What, what that allowed us to do was reduce our operating costs significantly up to the point that last year, we were one of the lowest electricity cost per coin operator versus others in this, in this space. That is important because there's something called having that keeps happening in this industry and we have to be sustainable. And our goal is not to stop there, but to continue to reduce our operating costs so that we can, we can continue to mine Bitcoin irrespective of what the pricing does. So those sites that we acquired, we did not stop there either. We further went out and started acquiring electron generation. So what, what that means is that we are in now partially generation business. Now, we're not a utility company but we like assets where we can generate electricity. So two, point, uh, two case studies for us. One is that we, are, we bought um, more than 100 megawatt um, wind farm in Texas. Now, some of you who are from Texas, you would know that uh, when the wind blows, there's a lot of electricity that, that is generated at the same time. And then it's distributed into, into the, uh, through the ISOs or the grid. The grid can, can get locked as a result of so much electricity being generated. What we did was we acquired this site. We reduced that congestion at the grid by taking these electrons away from the grid. And we put our modular or decentralized, or not decentralized, but uh, compute on the edge as we would call them. 20 to 40 foot containers, we dropped them on the site, on the dirt, and we put ASIC computers and put our state-of-the-art technology of cooling technology, and we start hashing Bitcoin. Now, we did the same thing not only there, but also we partnered with an oil and natural gas company and uh, spent two decades in the oil industry. It's, it's a pain for that industry where you have this flare gas, natural gas being flared in the, in the atmosphere. And uh, that generates, that's an environmental impact and things like that. So what we did was we started taking that flared gas and converted that to electricity. And now we drop these energy uh, or compute on the edge and start computing and hashing Bitcoin. So some creative ways of doing this, reducing our operating costs significantly. That means that we can have a low cost strategy and not worry about uh, pricing, price of electricity, price of Bitcoin or the hash price, as it's called, which is a combination of Bitcoin price and the global hash rate. On top of that, we, we have cooling technology that we have built ourselves. Uh, we are very proud of that. There's a lot of uh, excitement around that. We're deploying that two-phase immersion technology in our own operated sites this year, in addition to two outside customers. We're gathering data, and we expect that to significantly reduce our operating costs further as well. So all in all, cost reduction has been a primary focus for us. But if I have to reflect back 
on the hodl that we have, the 48,000 coins. Last year we did, um, just like some of my other colleagues who were here a few moments ago and will be here later today, we did converts. We did 0% converts, more than $2 billion last year, approximately $2 billion for zero, and then we did some more than 0% as well. And uh, we primarily went out and bit, bought Bitcoin from it. And as you can see, we, we have a twin turbo strategy as I started with. We can either mine Bitcoin and hold it on our balance sheet, the full HODL strategy, because we don't sell any of that Bitcoin, or we go out and buy Bitcoin from the outside world in the market, just like others are doing, by raising capital from outside that is accretive to our stockholders. So that has worked out very well for us. Last year, we bought 22,000 coins, for example, from the open market, while we produced 9,500 Bitcoin ourselves. And we continue to do that. And as a, as a reference point, if we were to buy all this Bitcoin uh, or produce all this Bitcoin that we hold today, it will, it will take us many years until 2036 at this capacity to accumulate that amount of Bitcoin. Same way of the amount of Bitcoin that we acquired, it will take us four years to accumulate that as part of mining operations. So it's a, it's a capital allocation this, uh, question. Where does it make more sense? Does it make sense to buy Bitcoin today? Or does it make sense to mine Bitcoin? So we, this, that's a question that we ask ourselves uh, almost on a daily basis. And that's where the twin turbo strategy for Mara has worked out very well. Our stockholders love that we hold Bitcoin. Our stockholders love when we grow our hash rate. And we are a proud Bitcoin miner who continue to expand worldwide responsibly and we operate in communities. We give back to the communities. Our communities love us for that. And that twin turbo approach work has worked out very well. I wanna finish this conversation uh, on, on a point that you guys may have already heard others talk about. If Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, or any of those big tech companies or companies that have ample amount of cash reserves on their balance sheet, if they had invested just 1%, 3%, or 5% of their cash reserves into Bitcoin, very small portion, over the last three, four, five years, they would have seen an IRR on their BTC investments between 30 to 90% or so. And that's not, that's, that's unheard of kind of rate of returns. You don't see these kind of rate, rate of returns, whether you're a hedge fund, whether you're a private equity, whether you are investing in your own business. You don't see these kind of rate of returns, uh, which, is, which is fascinating. So I'm gonna end here with, with a question for all of you who are considering buying Bitcoin, who are managers on board members of your, of your companies, where you have treasury assets and you're investing in US treasuries where you don't get much return, what is stopping you from this supercharged strategy? Please think about that. Make the best use of your resources and invest in the right, the right strategy. Thank you very much.